Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Dakut Zaman, and we're going through Kanz ad Daqaiq. Kanz ad Daqaiq. All right, so let's look at this then. So remember last week we mentioned a very sort of like common mas'ala that's mentioned in the texts, um, which is to do with the idea of uh, condition, right? So uh, making something contingent to a contract. We said this is not allowed in contracts. And the reason it's not allowed is because it creates this um, sort of like a problem. And we said the problem was, is that a transaction is um, based upon the idea of مُبَادَلَةُ الْمَالِ بِالْمَالِ بِالْتَرَادِ Right, so you're exchanging wealth for wealth. So wealth is being exchanged for wealth and both sides are happy. That's what the Hanafis say. That is what the whole, you can say, philosophy or the whole core essence of transactions is all about. It's about you got wealth, I've got wealth, <clears throat> we want to exchange that wealth and are we happy? Well, that's it then. That should be enough for us to be able to exchange. So it's based on this sort of like greater concept of mutual consent. Mutual consent when exchanging takes place. Now, if one person has an advantage over the other person, like he has an extra condition, which the other person doesn't have, that brings problems into this contract, right? Because clearly it's like one person's on, 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 a, on a step higher than the other. He has an advantage and this disadvantageous position that the other person is put into is clearly seen as being unfair and we said this is something which renders a contract fasted unless this condition is considered to be acceptable in the orf of the people right so the orf of the people kind of accepts this then cello it's fine um otherwise it will not be acceptable so we continue from what we said then so he says walo istathna minha artalan ma'lumatan sahha لو استثنى منها أرطال معلومة صحة كبيء بر في سنبله. So right, let's look at this then. Uh, let's say for example there is a tree, massive tree, right? I own the tree. You uh, are the buyer. You come to me and you say to me, I want to buy fruit of this tree, and the tree has, let's say, it's filled with fruit. Now. <clears throat> If I say to you, right, I will sell you the fruit except for uh, two kilos of fruit, right? I'll say the fruit except for two kilos. Technically, this should not be allowed, right? There's a report from Abu Hanif from Hassan which says this should not be allowed because what did we say before? We said that whenever you're selling something, there should always be transparency between the two. Now, if you're buying fruit of me and I say to you, I'll sell you the fruit except for two kilos. Now, what if we end up with only two kilos? That means you've purchased nothing, as in you've given money, but you've got nothing in return. So over here, the idea is that how can this transaction be considered to be valid if one person has advantage over the other? So this is basically, according to the Qiyas, this should be the, the, the case. Now, when we say Qiyas, what we mean is that the Hanafis, they try to understand a larger umbrella concept. Right, so the larger umbrella concept in which they try to fit in the ayats and the hadith to make sense, they say according to this qiyas, it shouldn't be allowed because clearly <clears throat> the other person is going to put his wealth at risk and he might get nothing at the end of it and then it's going to re re result in an argument and dispute. Yeah, muhasama. Um, so, no. So, how do we explain this then? The other uh, position which is the istihsani position, would be that it would be allowed. And the reason that it would be allowed is because if, if I'm selling apples on a tree and I kind of like, you've come to buy the apples, you can kind of gauge if the apples are for you, right? You can look at them and say, right, how, how many do you think they are here? So some people can approximate. They're good at looking at things and eyeballing it and kind of like having some sort of like an approximate understanding of how, much, how many apples they are. So if, if you come to me and I've got this big massive tree and I say to you, you know, two kilos are mine, but the rest is yours. You, you're going to say it's okay, isn't it? Because this istithna, this exemption is considered to be permissible, right? And the, the rule that they based this upon is the idea that يَجُوزُ uh, istithna is permissible إِذَا كَانَ يَجُوزُ إِذَا كَانَ بَيْعُهُ جائز. So anything you can sell on its own, you can do istithna of. Right, so in other words, can you sell two kilos of 
apples on its own? Yes, you can. So if you can sell two kilos of apples, that means you can exempt two kilos from a larger quantity, right? So, so this is where you have this idea of uh, istithna, you know, from something which is is kind of like known. And it says istithna min al-majhul. That's where we said last time, where Abu Hanifa said, if you're selling a large pile of food and you sell one cup, that one cup is allowed, but the rest is not allowed, right? Because there's jahala de. Right, so you kind of like it's like twisting it the other way around. You come to me and you want to buy two kilos. That's fine. Beyond two kilos, you can't buy because you don't know exactly how much is there, right? And Sahih Bain say no, you can't. As long as you can, you know, back the kashf, you can, you know, understand how much is there altogether. So he says, "Walau istathna minha artalan ma'lumatan sah." So if you were to exempt a certain measure, so artal is from the word rital, right? So rital is like a small kind of cup quantity, right? Normally like a uh, mud is made from two rittles. So if a mud is about 700 milliliters, a rittle is about, uh, I think it's roughly about 350, something like that. Uh, don't take me on that, but check it out. But it's about 350, you can say. So maybe it's something like, maybe like, you know, half of this cup or something. Yeah, maybe this cup might be a mud, roughly about, so let's say about half of this. So it's like a small amount of dates or something like that, right? So it's like a, that amount. Artala ma'lumatan saha. Saha meaning this is valid. Kabayi burrin fi sumbulhi. So this would be like selling burr, which is uh, like barley, right? So you're selling burr, selling barley, or you're selling wheat, or you're selling anything which is 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 formed in seeds. <clears throat> so wheat and barley inside like a seed, and then you break that open. And then inside of that is the is the powder, the flour. So he says, Kabayi bur, like selling uh, barley, fi sumbulihi, inside of its sumbul, inside the, uh, you know, the, the spike. So you have the spike, and inside the spike, you break it open. So what they normally do is, when they uh, plant these things and harvest them, they cut them, bring them, and then they stamp up on them with their feet or with the animal's feet. And then they take out the flour, separate the flour from the shaft, Right, and then they, they 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 sell the flour. They do whatever they want with the flour. So, in other words, over here, what do we have? We have this idea of the bait, the selling of the the flour, which is inside, isn't it? Right. So, if the if the flour is inside, you can't see the flour, can you? So this is this is like majhul. This is like this shouldn't be allowed, really, should it? Because you kind of can't see what you're buying, right? People when they buy wheat or they buy barley what do they really buy they buy it for the flour isn't it so if you're buy, buying like this packaged flour which you can't really see inside isn't it a bit much cool aren't you kind of gambling and you're like putting your money and, and guessing right because there's a rule in fiqh which is that bait al majhul is not allowed selling something which is unknown or you know you don't know how much is there shouldn't be allowed so here they've kind of exempted it because it's not going to lead to a fight is it Right. For example, if you come to me and you buy, you know, wheat, a whole, let's say, for example, I don't know, a whole, uh, how much of wheat do people buy? Let's say a whole uh, a bucket of wheat. I don't know what they're selling. And so you sell a whole large bucket of wheat or a large sort of like tied up bundle of wheat in, in with the spikes. Um, that's fine because generally people understand, right? You know, I understand I'm not getting exactly the amount of flour that I precisely want. Like, imagine I need, you know, 10 kilos of flour. I know this this wheat might have roughly about 10 kilos, a bit more, a bit less. It doesn't really bother me right? because I haven't bought it according to that quantity. I'm happy with this. So it's like some people are okay with the jahala that exists that's kind of like, um, you know, uh, forgivable, yeah? can be pardoned easily. Does that make sense? So he's saying that like selling the burr inside the sumbul. As in, there's jahala there, okay. But that jahala is not going to be mufti ila al-munaza'ah. It's not going to lead to a fight. Likewise, if I sell these apples on a tree and you come to me and I say, I'm selling you all these apples except for two kilos, uh, you're not really going to fight with me because you're looking at that apple, you're saying, you know what, that's, that's, that's enough. That's what I want, right? So the exemption of a small amount, even though it is jahala, this jahala resembles the jahala of inside the uh, inside this uh, you know uh, packaging itself right so he says this is permissible uh, like selling a bur uh, like selling of the the, the barley fi sumbulihi right inside of its sumbul um, like for example like we said you know it's something which is kind of overlooked then he says 
Wa fi qishri. And it's like selling baqilla in its qishr. So baqilla is like some sort of a, like a bean kind of food, right? Some say it's like uh, some beans and some say it's something else. But imagine like you buy a pod of beans. So if you've ever grown peas in your garden or beans or something like that, you don't find like beans just growing on the tree. You actually find it in a pod. You break open the pod and then you take the, the beans out. So when people buy beans in the pod, it should that should not be allowed because you're buying something which you can't see, right? And it's, there's kind of jahala there as well. So he's saying, no, actually, that is actually allowed because of the darura, the necessity. Otherwise, if every shopkeeper had to open them, it, it, it damages the, the contents right? because like it starts to uh, go rotten quicker or, you know, whatever. So he says, baqi la fi qishrihi in its, in its peel. That, that's allowed. Um, so how far can we take this? Does that make sense? Like we talked about the fruits. The fruit are hidden in the tree. Like they haven't grown yet. We don't allow that. When they manifest themselves, we allow that. Because we know this is something which is muntafa' bihi, beneficial, and, and, it, and it benefits people. So the Shafis differ with us on this. The Shafis actually don't allow these certain scenarios because they go by the Qiyas, which says, look, if you can't see the item and you can't be precise exactly what you're buying, you might be buying something which is wrong. Like some people go, they buy eggs. And when they go to buy an egg, it's kind of like if you buy a whole tray of eggs, let's say 30 eggs, you might get one egg inside of it that's a bit rotten. But that's okay. Right, you, that's, you're not going to kind of go back to the shopkeep and argue. Most people don't do that. And likewise, the precise measurements of the eggs, like if you were to weigh every egg, you know, scientifically, you know, you're going to find some of the eggs are going to be different than the other eggs. So that those kind of small, uh, you know, the differences, right? Those don't really lead to arguments. That's 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 the basic argument here. So it's the baqilla fi qishri and the baqilla, like we said, that kind of. Uh, uh, and then you can extend this to other things like, you know, I don't know, maybe something like, you know, lucky bags, someone when you were young. Yeah, you should, did you buy lucky bags? Yeah, put in the comments if you bought lucky bags. So you buy lucky bags and you find something, you know, in one uh, and another one's another thing and another thing. Or for example, like football cards that kids buy. Or for example, like uh, what else is there? Put in the comments if you can think of anything of that sort. Kinder surprise eggs, right? So all these kind of things, yes, there is a technical sort of like difference between each one. You're not getting the thing that you might have anticipated, but is it going to really lead to a fight? Not really, right? So this is why these kind of things are exempted. Some have even extended this mas'ala to things like, like Mufti Taki Usmani actually mentions this in his Fikul Buyu and says things like, if a person was to buy like a trunk and that trunk had things inside of it which are worth the amount, but they weren't really the things you might be expecting. As long as it's not going to cause an argument, then it's acceptable. So, for example, like, you know, sometimes people sell these kind of like suitcases, these un un uh, unwanted suitcases in the airport, right? No one's come for them, uh, uncollected. Uh, and uh, or some sometimes some people, I think some people even sell things like, you know, these... Uh, these old solar sort of storage units, right, with filled with things. You can have a look at the things, but some things might be broken in there, and things like that. So there is this like, kind of idea that, look, if we were to put restrictions on people and we were to say to them, no, you can't buy these kind of things, it's going to make business extremely hard for lots of people around the world because you are going to get situations where the buyer might have to kind of like just accept the things as they are. Right, like you know, like we said, uh, some people they buy these kind of like mystery parcels, mystery boxes on eBay, on Amazon, right? And they kind of open them and they, and they try to see what they found. Um, you can imagine it's something similar to that. The idea, like we said, if it leads to an argument, no, it's not allowed. And if it's not going to lead to an argument, then it's fine. Going to Hanafis. Okay, uh, let's finish off this chapter then. So he says, "Wa ujratu al al wa ujratu naqd thaman wa waznuhu." Uh, uh, so in the olden days they used to deal with gold and silver didn't they so if you have gold and silver and let's say you're buying i don't know dates or apples or whatever then the problem is when you buy dates you're going to need to weigh so if the seller if i'm the seller and you come to me you want to buy apples from me i've got a weighing machine haven't i so i can get them weighed but sometimes they never used to have that like in markets in the olden days to be precise, sometimes they wouldn't allow customers or sellers to actually have their own scales out of the fear that people would cheat. So they would have these kind of like appointed ones by the, the government used to appoint them. And these appointed weighers would go around and offer their service. You pay them a fee and then they would weigh them their things for you. So let's say you had apples. You, you call one and you say, can you weigh this? And he goes, okay. So he checks it and weighs it. Just like, you know, in the airport, sometimes you have these machines where you can put money in and weigh your suitcase. 
so, you know, something very similar to that. So he's saying, who has to pay for weighing the apples? As in, do I have to pay because I'm selling them to you? Or do you have to pay because you're buying them? Who deserves to pay for them? Right? So he says, Ujratul Kayal al Right? So you look at who is the one that is going to benefit from this. It's the seller, isn't it? The seller's getting rid of his stock. He's selling it. So the idea is the seller is the one who is in need of this because he wants to get rid of his stock. So he is in need of weighing it. So therefore, he has to pay Ujratu the fee of the Kayal. Kayal is the Kala Yakilu. And the, the guy who does it is called the Kayal. Right? So he's the Kayal. Alal Bayi. Salah, I've got to pay for that, right? Uh, so, Ujratul Kayal al uh, Bayi. Because that's the only way that I'm able to hand the old item over to you, right? Taslim can only be completed, right? Because Ijab and Qabul is done. Before this transaction to be complete, this has to be precisely weighed. And for that to happen, right? You know, we've got to call someone in. Wa Ujratul Naqdi Thaman or wasn't he? But what about the money, the cash? So the cash, this, who has to pay? So in the olden days, you had gold and silver, right? So you had two problems with gold and silver. One is the weight, right? Because different coins used to weigh different weights. So they weren't all equal like today's coins that we have, right? They're all equal, right? It's just the value. We don't look at weight anymore. But in the olden days, gold and silver was actually bought by weight. So if you said, I'm selling this for two dirhams, you sometimes don't want two dirhams. You want like a specific weight of a dirham. So therefore, in order for us to be able to work that out in the markets, there were these freelance guys walking around and you call them and say, excuse me, can you come here? Can you weigh these coins? And you come, you'd have these special scales and he'd give it to him and he'll weigh it for you. And then he would uh, hand you the, you know, the, the, the coins and you pay him a fee, right? And likewise, checking the, the quality of the gold. Is it 12 carat, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24? What, what uh, quality of gold is it? So this is also something that you'd have to uh, check out as well. So you call this guy, this guy would come and then he'd check, you know, check the quality and tell you what kind of quality it is. So for this, who has to pay for this? So he says, Ujratu naqd the thaman, the, the, the fee for the checking the quality. Naqad means to check the quality of the the, the, the fee, the, the, the thaman, the payment. Or waznihi, and it's wazan, yeah. It's, it's, it's weight, like the, who's going to pay for weighing the coins. So the weighing for the product, the commodity, is on me. Or wasn't al al-mushtari. These two things you've got to pay for. Uh, quality check and weight check of the coins. Yeah, so this has to be done. In, in our days today, let's say there's a big deal going taking, taking place and we need the money to be um, uh, you know, transferred into another currency. Who is going to pay for that? So the, the buyer would pay for it. It's like he is the guy that is in need of the product, right? So he's in need to get the product. In other words, for, for him to get the product, he's in need of handing over the, the cash. And the cash has to be according to what was expected in the contract. So therefore, it's like the buyer is in need of handing over the coins, you can say. So this is why you can think of it in today's times as well. Things like who has to pay for, let's say I go to the shops and I pay by my card. And there's a fee every time I make a payment. There is a fee that's t that's taken by the company. Who pays for that fee, right? So that fee would come from me. The the seller wouldn't have to legally. The seller wouldn't have to pay for that fee because he is not in need of that. I am in need of giving the money. Does that make sense? So the seller is in need of giving the product, and the buyer is in need of giving the cash. So that's why he is the one. So in today's times, we don't have this idea of weight and maybe counting. Maybe I don't know if it's like. You know, sometimes some of these crazy guys, they buy things in pennies or in two peas or and they've got a large quantity and someone's got to sit there and count all of them. Someone can charge for that. Yeah. So who's got to pay for all of this? So this would be paid for. I mean, if someone was to think about it, like in some of these shops, they have these big machines where you could put your coins in, right? And it, gives, it charges you a fee for counting them. All right. I mean, that, that who's going to have to pay for that? The, the buyer would have to pay for that. So whoever purchases uh, an item بثمن, in exchange for some a payment, أولاً, he has to hand over the cash first. Otherwise, if he if he buys it in exchange for bartering, so if if basically on both sides, if you have one side commodity, one side cash, who has to hand over the item first? Like I'm, for example, like this, this, this is a phone. I'm selling you the phone and you're going to give me cash for it. So now let's say legally we sign the contracts. Now who's going to hand over the item first? Or you buy my car from me. 
do I have to give you the car keys first and then you give me the cash? Or do you have to give me the cash first? Or do you have to, you know, how does it work? So the rule is this, that if on both sides you have ayn and thaman, if you have non-currency and currency, the currency has to be given first. But if you on both sides, you have non-currency on both sides, or on both sides you have currency, like for example, non-currency, I exchange my phone for your phone, that's non-currency for non-currency, or cash for cash, I've got pounds, you give me dollars. So th in these two situations, both items have to be given together, right? At the same time, like no one is given preference. But if the items, one is non-currency and one is currency, the currency must always, always be given, given first. Man ba'a silatin, whoever buys or sells a commodity, bithamanin, in exchange for cash, in exchange for non currency. Sallama hu awalan, he has to, this, the buyer has to hand over the currency first, wa illa, otherwise, if that's not the case, and it is if both sides are non currency or both sides are currency, sullima ma'an, both items have to be given together. Does that make sense? Now, why is this for? Well, the reason is because Hanafis say, and I think maybe next week we'll talk more about this, this issue. But the Hanafis basically say that, look, you know when you're buying something, whenever you buy anything, anything which is non-currency, it's automatically, it's automatically uh, understood by both the buyer and seller in the contract. So for example, if I'm selling this phone, this phone is the exact phone that I know I'm selling and you know you're buying. If I was to say to you, I'm selling you this phone, and I was to pick up another phone, and I gave you another phone, then that contract would, would not be valid. Why? Because I have to give you the exact phone that was described. Does that make sense? Unless it's like something which is, uh, you know, uh, ubiquitous, right? It's exactly the same, right? And it's something which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a an, uh, an, uh, fungible item. Fungible items I can give you, right? But if it's non-fungible item, right? then I have to give you the exact thing that I told you. And as for cash, cash is not considered to be muta'ayyan, it's not considered to be specified in a contract until it's put in the hand of the seller. That's the rule. So cash is not considered to be specified until it's in the hand of the seller, whereas a non-currency item is considered to be muta'ayyan, it's specified as soon as the offer and acceptance is done, even if handover has not been done. Does that make sense? So if I sell you, for example, like my car, right? Even if I haven't given you the keys yet, that's the car that's yours now. But if you were to come to me and say to me, I'm for this phone, I'm going to give you a hundred pounds. So you took out a hundred pounds. Yeah, let's say, you know, two fifties, you took out two fifty pound notes. He said, here, I'm going to give you these two fifty pound notes. And then when the time came to give, you said, nope, I'm going to give you 10 tens, one, two, three, four, five, 10, 10 pound notes. That's allowed, days. You can actually exchange. You can give me, you know, a hundred pound coins if you want. You can give me a thousand, um, you know, um, pennies, whatever it comes up to. You can give me that. It doesn't really matter because cash items, which are currency, do not become mutayyan until they put in, put in the hand. So if you had two fifty pound notes and you put it in my hand, then you grabbed it off me. You can't do that. Then it's nasi now. It's done. Those two fifty pound notes have become muta'ayyan because now it's come in my possession, and now ta'ayyan has been done. You can't step back now. You see the difference there, right? So let's just recap what we've done today. Now, if you haven't understood this last point, uh, let me know in the comments. And next lesson, I'll try to just recap it, right? Because sometimes we need time to absorb information, take things in, um, and this is a very important concept, especially when it comes to trying to understand modern sort of like problems that we have in our society when it comes to this idea of handing over currency to other people and what kind of currency do we have to hand over and this this whole idea of when we hand over currency whether it's through a bank exchange or whether it's through money transfer or anything of that sort when does that when is that yin considered to have been done right when is receipt right so when receipt is done when it comes to currency what does that mean all right so anyway, today we mentioned the masala with regards to this idea of exemption. We talked about this idea that it shouldn't be allowed, but the Hanafis have allowed it because it doesn't lead to a fight usually. And we also talked about Giyas onto the masala of the bur in the sumbul and the bakilla, the, the, the beans inside of his pod. And also who pays for the fees for external, sort of like third person who comes in 
and has to sort out all these kind of things because it happens nowadays someone wants to buy a house you got to have solicitors you have to have surveyors who pays for these surveyors who pays for solicitors who pays for for example like moving the furniture from the house all these things you know we have to try and ascertain who is the one that actually does all of these things so yeah jazakumullah khair i hope you guys enjoyed this lesson let me know in the comments what you guys think and i will see you guys next time if you haven't subscribed uh, so subscribe hit the like button and share it with all your friends assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh jazakumullah khair guys for all of your support without your support i wouldn't have been able to produce the videos that i've put up on my youtube channel and there is so much more that i really want to do and without the support of you guys who are patrons generously supporting this channel I've been able to get myself a camera, which as you guys can see, the quality of this camera, a mic system, software, I've been able to hire an editor. So what do I want to do? I want to make lots and lots and lots of more videos for beginners, for intermediate, advanced in the subjects like Arabic and Fiqh and Hadith and Tafsir and Aqidah and all those other things as well. And for this to happen, again, this channel needs support. So if you guys want to become patrons and support this channel, then check out the link below. Also, if you do become patrons, you'll have access to videos that I don't put up on my normal YouTube channel. So check that out, inshallah. And there's most other perks as well that you guys can uh, benefit from. And if you want to um, access uh, this channel through social media, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, Facebook page, and other things as well that you can visit. So jazakumullah khair again guys. Thank you very much for your support. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair for watching this video. I hope to see all of you guys. If you guys are interested, please leave us feedback, get in contact with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.